Hello, my name is Jason Murray and I'm a Solutions Readiness Engineer at Cisco and this is the third video in a series of videos centered around setting up a Business Edition 6000 server at 9.x. In the last video I went through the pre-configuration of Communications Manager, Unity Connection, and I am in Presence to get them ready for Unified Provisioning Manager or UPM. In this video, now that those apps are ready to go, I am going to be going through and using UPM to deploy my system and have it push out the configuration. In this demonstration, I'll be using the UPM BE version. Now there is another manager called the Cisco Prime Collaboration Provisioning that you can also use. There are some differences between the two, but both are free and fully licensed to 1,000 users and 1,200 devices if you purchased a BE6K. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this BE6K up and running using UPM BE. Okay, so I am logged in, or I'm not logged in yet, but I am webbed into the actual UPM server. Now this server I've already deployed. There is a quick start guide that you need to follow because it, this server itself comes in a OVA template that you deploy just like the other video that I showed deploying a communications manager server but this one you'll just deploy the same way you'll have to set up a MAC address the right MAC address which is shown in the quick start guide as well as go through a setup program but for now we've got this set up we're gonna go ahead and log in with the PM admin account and then the password that I set during the setup all right, so the home page is coming up. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our devices. And to do that, we're going to go to Deployment, click on Devices. We're going to let this page load. And then the first thing we see is this little Getting Started pop-up. And you can read through it if you want. But we're going to go ahead and say Do Not Show This Again. And we're going to hit the X to close it out. Now we're going to actually set up all of our devices. This is our device page. So the first thing we're going to do is put the IP address of our communications manager server as well as the account name and password and then we're going to hit test access. Now that's what what it's doing is it's going out and testing to make sure it can actually configure the server. That means the actual web service needs to be started, has to have the right username and password, but you can have extension mobility or you can have some dialing options set up when you when it goes out and creates the route pattern. So this outside dial number is going to be, we're going to set this to 9, but this is basically in your route pattern where you have a 9 dot whatever. So users will hit 9 to get an outside line and then you'll get a dial tone. So that came up successfully. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the IP address of Unity Connection also put in the account name and the password and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to hit a test just to make sure we got that all the services right and make sure we got the right admin uh, username and password now for the voicemail section we're going to set up a pallet number MWI on MWI off numbers as well as voicemail ports It's going to create 24 of them it's licensed to 24 so you could learn to start at 2501 and then all those ports, we're just going to go ahead and say tw all 24. We're going to answer calls on all 24 of those. You can set whatever number you'd like. There's also an option for Exchange Server. You can have that if you want integrated messaging, but we don't have that set up. So we're going to set up the Presence Server, which is that IP address. Same thing, admin password. And we're going to test. Should come back successful. It does. So now we've got... LDAP that we're going to set up just like LDAP in Communications Manager that we set up earlier. We're going to put that IP address in there as well. The port number isn't filled out for you like the other times it was, but it is 389, same port number. Admin Distinguished Name, same thing. We're going to use the Administrator account like we did in the LDAP Configuration and Communications Manager. And then we're also going to put the search base in it so all the users are actually in the users container so that's where we're going to set up and then we're going to do a test test access now sometimes this happens with your first initial setup uh, you're missing it'll look like it just cleared out all the config well the LDAP config actually didn't go away so if we go back to deployment devices 
and click on that link we'll go down here and, and you'll see that LDAP the LDAP configuration is still there it just kind of got rid of it but the voicemail section did clear out so we're unfortunately we're gonna have to put that back again and I've done this many times before and it seems like it always does this so it may not do that to you but it does to me so I just had to refill it out just a couple seconds there but everything else should be good to go everything's tested out so we're gonna go ahead and do a save okay so now we've got this little box that comes up and it says that update is in progress so what it is actually doing now is going out to each one of these applications and configuring each one of them so to set up presence you're going to need a trunk between communications manager and presence it needs to be set up with a certain device profile that's setting that up all these voicemail ports are getting set up right now as well as voicemail pilot numbers profiles setting up hunt pilots because it does a skinny integration when it does a voicemail integration so it does all that so it's getting all this back end work done so when you when this is completed it will be ready to go to start adding users and things like that to it so this is like real quick takes about five minutes or so for this to push all the configuration out and once it's done you're ready to go start adding users and all of that hard work that it took hours before uh, might uh, it'll be done so I actually finished the video or paused it for a second and now that uh, the update in progress has gone away we can go ahead and hit the go to site management so we can configure our sites alright so now we're gonna create a site for our system here so you can create up to about 50 sites on here and each site has a different usage profile underneath that site and they get applied to the users as you see fit so we're gonna create one site so we're gonna create site one now on here we can do a dial plan it's only supported to be able to be pushed out as a North American dial plan but you can modify that in the communications manager itself you can set up the time uh, interest site we're gonna set that to four and then as far as the gateway we're just gonna put an IP address in here and this is gonna be actually a H323 gateway um, if you want MGCP you're gonna to have to create that manually using the unified provisioning manager uh, you can only create H323 as far as directory number block this is what it's going to be uh, pulled from when it creates a users and assign numbers to them so they're gonna we're gonna create a block of numbers for these users to pull from it's actually in a little bit it'll, it'll actually match map up the active directory setting with this block and assign the correct number so we got that and if you don't set this block and you use LDAP uh, it's gonna error out so you gotta make sure you have that if you're gonna import via LDAP you also have a place for survivable remote site telephony which is SRST I'm not going to configure that and then we have the user import section and what we're going to do is we're going to authenticate and synchronize pull in the information from LDAP and if there's any changes in LDAP compared to what we have in UPM we're going to tell it to go ahead and update all the fields whatever's changed update it you can also have it delete the users uh, delete the users if it has no services assigned to it or always delete whatever you want to do but we're just gonna say do not delete and then there's also a search base configuration here all of our users again are in the user container this may be different on your site you may have in a different container so just match up wherever they happen to be and now this is how they match up the device block or number block to IP phone number uh, there's a couple settings in Active Directory so you can configure that there and then it's going to match it up and give the user the right number in Communications Manager. So we're going to do a simple query. Uh, this one is just going to pull all the users in in that particular container. You can get a little granular if you want to break it down by department number but this particular query will just pull in everybody so we're not going to try to limit what users get pulled in so got that we're going to go ahead and click this save button 
Okay, so that's going to save, and now once that gets done, we're going to go straight into creating some usage profiles. And usage profiles are basically profiles that you group users into depending on what phones you want to assign to them, what kind of services, so you can have executive, contractor, or whatever. But we're going to go ahead and set those profiles up. So we're going to hit Next. Now there's a default profile in here which is what we're going to actually use we're not going to create any more but there's a standard one you can put in here and you can see all the different configurations you can add to users so you can group them up into certain groups and then assign them certain capabilities whatever you want to do so we're going to go ahead and use the standard profile and then you can give them line voicemail whatever you want to do you can unify messaging if you set up exchange earlier you can check that box since we didn't do that we're gonna set presence we're gonna give them the presence capability and then you can also match up in LDAP and go even granular in who you import via this one you can use the title description or department and anything that's matching those fields in LDAP will only get assigned this usage profile so we're just gonna pull the ones that say executive in so whoever has the title of executive is gonna get pulled in and get assigned this actual profile dial plan itself like I said is gonna create some route patterns you're gonna have an emergency route pattern local route pattern It's gonna put that nine in front of each one of them because we picked that earlier so you're gonna have all those different route patterns and it's also going to create a couple phones for these users so whatever the default phone is is what it's actually going to create on communications manager so we don't have any physical phones in this lab itself so we don't need to use these two phones we can hit X to close them out we'll close that one out and then we're going to open up this menu here and pick the phones we do have so we do have IP communicator, so that's what we're going to use it as a remote lab. And then we're going to use the CSF as well. So that's our Jabber device that we're going to create. So we're going to, those are the only two ones that we have in the lab today. So this is the ones that we're going to put in here. And whatever one that is the default is what gets automatically created and a line associated to it. So you don't have to manually do it. So you have that. We also have this button called default service settings and there's a ton of services and a ton of configuration you can do in this particular box so you've got phone configuration model specific configuration there's a lot of things in here you can go through and take a look at it and see what you can do so you can see all that but what we're particularly interested in is the line configuration in this lab so we're gonna hit the down arrow and choose the voicemail profile so this is gonna assign this voicemail profile to all of our users which is only two but this is gonna tell them when they hit the voicemail button what profile what hunt pilot to go for so hit save on here okay so the settings have saved so we're gonna hit this X button to close out this box and then we're gonna go ahead and hit save on this now it's going to go ahead and save. It's good to go. So your usage profile is configured. Now we're actually going to deploy the site. It's basically going to tell you that it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to click OK. And now our configuration is going to start pushing out. So it's going to go, it's going to go out and configure those dial patterns and configure all the things that is needed for this site and get it prepared to do our user import here in just a moment so while we're waiting for this to go it's gonna wait for a few check marks going on let's generate the configuration gonna do a provision configuration and then it's gonna ready to site so once we get three check marks just like so we're ready to go so we're gonna go ahead and go to the user management section by clicking this button here and we're going to import some users using those profile configurations we just did so we're going to use LDAP to do our configuration so we're going to configure them and import them into site 1 we're going to use the drop down and do import user now you can import them from a file a txt format or a csv format and if you click on these links it'll download a, a template which you can use uh, works just well but we're gonna go ahead and do LDAP since we do have that set up and we're gonna 
drop down the list, tell them what site we want to pull the settings from. And as you notice, there's an error right here that says, or a warning here saying, if you didn't create that number block earlier, then you're gonna, it's gonna fail. The import's gonna fail if you do LDAP import. So we have that set up already, so it's not gonna fail. So we're good to go there. So we're gonna click import. And this takes just a little bit of time. It's gonna do a sync, and then it's going to pull in all of the users that are out configured in that user container that matches our settings of executive in the title description. So it takes just a few minutes to do this. It'll start syncing here in a minute and then we'll be able to do a refresh here in just a moment and we'll see all those users populating. But right now what it's doing is pulling in that user one, user two, and it's creating a IP communicator phone is creating a line for it and assigning that line to that IP communicator phone and doing all that stuff on the back end. So it takes a little bit of time. It's also because we check those boxes for voicemail and presence. It's also creating voicemail ports for those users, each one of them. And then it's going to create a presence service for each one of them. So they'll be able to use presence as well. And when you do presence, it also, you know, it does the line of association, device association, and other things like that. So it's doing a lot of things right now. So it takes a few minutes for each user to get imported and configured to push that out. And while we are kind of waiting on this to happen, you can check the status of what's going on, what's being configured. You can click this little not the refresh button, but this button right here, and see all the different orders that are going out because they call everything that happens here in order. And now you can see that the order for adding a line, adding a phone, a voicemail, user services has all been completed. So you'd be able to see all those in here, keep track of it, of when it was done, who added what, and things like that. So that's a good way to check that out. So all these things show that they are complete so this little refresh button here we're gonna hit that and and be able to refresh our page you can also hit the refresh button on your browser window if you want to do it that way that'll that'll actually refresh the window itself but the little green arrow will do a good job at doing that so we're gonna wait for just a second while the page refreshes and we should get some users in here and hopefully they say that they are complete and they do so we have two users they have they are assigned each the phone number that was assigned in LDAP so user 1 has 2001 user 2 has 2002 and like I said they both say complete so what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple things to user 1 and user 2 we're going to set up Jabber it did create the IPC phone but we're also going to set up a Cisco Jabber phone so it can do some calling from there so that phone type is going to be CSV so client services framework that's what all Jabber devices need to be created at and only the two that show up here is what we created in our usage profile set the template and then we're just going to give it a name of user1 Jabber so there's no stipulation on what you need to do here. It'll yell at you if you put something not supported. So we're going to click Save. Order is in progress. Everything you do on here is in order. So you're ordering a Jabber device for user 1. And we're going to do the same thing. Click Add Phone for user 2. We're going to select on there. It's a CSV. Same button template. And this one we're going to say User 2 Jabber. And we're going to click Save on that. All right, so while those are going out and configuring, we can go back to user one, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a shared line to that Jabber device, so it'll share the line of that IPC device. So we drop down the box, we click Add a Shared Line, you got line as the product type, and then we're going to choose the user one Jabber, it's already created for us. So now we have that in here, line position, there's only one to choose from. And then the directory number, 2001, 2002, it's already created those directory numbers from us during the import. So we're going to choose 2001 because it's Jabber 1 
is going to use uh, user one is going to use Jabber one. So going to do same thing for user two. Going to add a shared line. The selected phone is going to be our user two Jabber device uh, line position. is going to be the same. And then we're going to choose 2002 for this one because that's what it is assigned to user 2. Okay, so now that is going out, adding shared lines, adding the Jabber devices and all that. And that's all we're really going to do on UPM because all the devices are ready to go. But there is one more thing that we're going to actually set. Now each user has the ability to pull up a self-care page which we'll be able to access through this UPM manager as an admin. So we're going to select user 1 and then we're going to click on the personal settings button. Now this is going to pull up another browser window or another tab that's we're in Firefox here and it's going to open up the telephone self-care page. Now this self-care page users will be able to go to themselves and set their pin number, set things like their password and some other things that we're going to see here in just a second. A bunch of different things. So we'll see here that uh, we're on user one it's got two phones configured one of them is a IP communicator phone one of them is a jabber phone so we see that we have two users associated with our two devices associated with this user and you've got different settings that you can do and this is not just for the admin this is for the users to be able to do so users can go in here and set speed dials they can go in and set do not disturb or using on hold or there's an other tab you can click on you can disable your speakerphone speakerphone and headset so there's different things not only the admin can go in and do but the user themselves can do so there's some line settings you can do as well you've got call forward that you can set caller ID notifications and different like things but the one we're concerned about right now is the user setting and that one is going we're going to set the pin number of the of the voicemail box of the user so right now the, since it's been imported through LDAP there's nothing set so we're going to need something set for the user to use when they first initially log on to their voicemail account so we're just going to set that to one two three four five uh, something simple and then we're going to hit save so now when that user goes in to log into voicemail it's going to ask for a pin number and this is what it's going to be so you can give this access to your users they can go in and set the pin number themselves through the self-care page using Unified Provisioning Manager. And then we're going to go ahead and do user 2 as well and click on personal settings. This is going to pull up that same page so you can go ahead and go to user settings and we're going to set the pin number for the voicemail box for user 2. Okay, so user 2 has been saved so we're going to go ahead and close out their self-care portal page and that really is it as far as configuration of UPM so in this whole time you set up integration between those three applications and you set up two users and assign devices and all that stuff so there's really one more thing that I want to touch on and go in back into communications manager we're going to set up a few things for Jabber itself so within the new setup between I'm a presence and Unity connection or not unique connection but communications manager we have UC services and service profiles so if we click find here unified provision manager already created four services for I'm in presence and you can see those here but there's one more that I want to add to in order for our Jabber clients to get that voicemail tab that we saw earlier and that's the mail store service so that doesn't get added by this version of unified provision manager so we're gonna go ahead and click add the service type is going to be mail store. We're going to click next. And in here, we're just going to give it a name of uh, UC mail store, which is what I already have in here. And then the IP address of our Unity Connection server. Don't be alarmed by the product type saying exchange. This is still going to the Unity Connection server. So we're going to click save. And then now we're going to modify our service profile that was created by Unified Provisioning Manager and add this mail store in here as well as one other setting we're going to modify. So we're going to click find. This is going to find the actual service profile that was created automatically. You didn't have to do this. 
and then once this comes up we're gonna have this voicemail profile section and we're gonna set credentials on the actual logging into the voicemail box so it's gonna we're gonna change it to use communications manager and I am present since that is already set up for LDAP we're gonna use LDAP with communications manager to authenticate us to log into the voicemail box in Jabber itself so we're gonna go ahead and set that and then this part here this mail store we need to set to the one we just uh, created just a second ago and we're gonna add this to this profile now this profile which has a lot of settings in it already is what we're gonna associate to our users and they're gonna pull all this configuration using Jabber so this is how Jabber is getting configured by this profile so we're gonna click Save now one other thing that we have to do because we did import with LDAP we have to go to each one of the users so we go user management end user and then we're gonna click on the actual link of the users and assign this profile to the user account so we're gonna check this box that enables I'm in presence if you don't check this box you're not going to be able to log in the Jabber at all so it has to be checked and then we're going to set the UC service profile right here now if you went in and created the users locally or uses a spreadsheet then that box for each one we're going to use your two as well this box and the profile will already be assigned if you go in and, and create the users manually through UPM but since we did LDAP it doesn't work that way so we're gonna to have to go and manually do that setting and that brings us to the end of this video as you've seen the UPMBE is very powerful in pushing out the initial configuration as well as creating users in just a short amount of time you brought up three applications integrated them and created a couple users with two devices each now if you were doing this with the manual way going to each application you probably still be at the integration part like I mentioned before, UPMBE as well as Prime Provisioning is free for you to use if you bought the BE6K system. Each one has different features and it's up to you which one to use. In the next and last video in this series, I will be going through licensing your BE6K system using Cisco's Enterprise Licensing Manager or ELM. Until then, thanks for watching and thanks for choosing Cisco.